Uh, hi, this is Ian Zepp again. Um, this is going to be another video in the series of tracking our building out our um, product sets application from conception through to publication on the App Exchange. So in this video, we're going to demo how some of the UI uh, layout has changed since our previous walkthrough. Now, in, in the last set of videos, we discussed adding in product sets and creating the basic framework for the Visual Force page that pops up when we click on an Add Product Set here. Now just to refresh, uh, this is what our Product Sets page used to look like. So we had uh, a basic layout, we had a filter box with a filter button. Now these were disabled because we didn't have any way, uh, we didn't have any Product Set items here to display. Um, a save and return and a cancel button. Now the cancel button worked, but because there was nothing to save, the save and return button was disabled. So that's the way it used to look. So after a few changes, this is the way that it looks now. So a couple of things to notice right off the bat is that we do have an active filter box uh, where we can enter criteria and it will change the list of product set names that come back. So if you have dozens or hundreds of predefined product sets, you can very quickly narrow them down. And you can do that uh, based on text that's in any of these three fields right here. So for example, if I search for Gen and click Filter, I will only get the product set that contains a keyword Gen someplace. Likewise, if I click the Clear button, it returns me to all of the product sets. Now this works on the region field as well. Now if you remember we set up the region field as a pick list um, and the values in there really aren't important. If you were implementing something similar you could put whatever values you wanted in there. But let's say I wanted to find all of the product sets that were in the south. I could do south or I could even just do sow and filter on that. Likewise if I wanted to do north I could put in north and it would filter on that. So that's how the filter criteria works. We're going to clear that out. Now the next thing is that we actually want to be able to choose one of these. So this each line item here is actually behind the scenes a group of uh, associations to products. So if we click on one of these, this is actually the demo set that we created in one of our previous videos where we walked through the product sets tab and how to create um, product sets and product set items. So this is the layout that is displayed when we click that select button. A couple of things to notice here. First of all is that uh, it has a nice field oriented layout at the top similar to how you would see uh, the detailed display on any other custom object. And then it also automatically pulls in and displays the list of all of the products that are associated with this particular product set. It also shows us a reselect button. That reselect button allows us to return to the previous page and choose a different one. So if we click on one by accident or it doesn't have the products that we want associated with it, we can reselect. Now the other nice thing is that reselect preserves filter criteria. So if we entered in demo and found only the product set that we wanted and we clicked that and then we went back and we said, oops, nope, this is not the right one. I'm going to hit reselect. It takes us back and our filter criteria is still there. So it preserves those values between page loads. That's the essence of this next set of changes. Uh, again, this, oh, apparently my screenshot went away someplace, but that, that was the old page layout. This is the new page layout. We have a working filter box and one more little thing to notice is that save and return is disabled here, but when we select the product set, we now have an active save and return button. Now this doesn't actually copy the products yet. That's going to happen in a future stage. But we can click the button, and it will give us a nice error message that says, please try again later. So that is our product set selection page in a nutshell. The next few videos will focus on some of the technical implementation aspects behind making this work. Thank you for watching.